Well, well, okay. thank you, thank you, Evo, and hello, everyone. It's uh, good to see familiar faces. Um, I, I, I'm going to take just about five minutes. Um, I just want to put this in a little bit of of, of context. So I would I went to Kiev uh, at the Emerge Gathering in in 2019, and and it was it, it really it really made an impression. Um, the conversations that I was having with the Ukrainians, and and I I I saw that there there was a, a they were approaching um, intractable issues um, such as governance and social organization in in a new and fresh way, um, and I became very intrigued. And then we had the pandemic, and uh, weren't able to gather again until Berlin in 2021. And during that time, uh, I was thinking about. How do we how do how do we address the non-trivial collective organization uh, conundrum that's stopping us from acting on climate and other other issues? Um, and around that time, Jonathan, you you put out an essay called "The Impossible We," and and I sat with that for a while. And and before Berlin, um, I was thinking, what what is missing? And and I wrote an article for for Emerge on. Maybe we don't have a, a collective we archetype. You know, maybe we just don't know how to recognize ourselves as collective. And at at that uh, gathering in Berlin and, and, to, and talking with um, my Ukrainian friends, I, I came to understand that um, that's what you had been doing since 2014, in, in <laughs> after the original um, uh, incursion. Uh, and and so when. <laughs> When uh, Russia turned up the heat in February, um, I wasn't really surprised by, by the level of gra grassroots organization response. Um, and, and that, <laughs> the world, it took the world by surprise. Um, and uh, and the, the, the courage, the collective, the coordination, seeing the organization of the people going from organization to more of an organism-like. And, and I began to think, and I've seen over the, the last 20 weeks of our calls, that maybe this impossible we is becoming possible. And maybe what we're seeing is the beginning of, of an emergence of some type of, of collective we archetype, something. Uh, it's, it's, it's been very heartening. So I, I thank you all for, for allowing us to, um, uh, to, to witness this and, and your openness and um, generosity. And uh, the last thing I want to say is that <laughs> uh, we know from the calls that you're already thinking about the future, the, the post-war the post uh, Ukraine, and, and the danger of, <laughs> or the concern about messing up the victory. Well, you know, I, I would say trust what, what you're doing. Um, um, the, the, this, this renaissance that's going to come um, <laughs> isn't going to come from, from the, from the institutions that we've built in the West that haven't been serving us all that, all that well. Um, I, 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 I think that something new is going to, to take form, so it's going to merge. Um, yes, the West needs to continue material uh, economic supports, but I, 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 I think, <laughs> I, I feel we're in good hands with the Ukrainian um, innovation. So, Onto, onto a little art and poetry. Um, I'm gonna read uh, a soliloquy from my very first book. It's called Guards of the Heart. Um, I thought it would be appropriate for, for this um, gathering. And it's, uh, I'm gonna read a scene, it's a soliloquy. And in, in, in the book, there's two main characters. There's an old woman who's sort of the wisdom keeper, um, transmitting wisdom to Samosa who's a, a younger woman. Um, it's set in medieval-ish um, Europe uh, at a time of pestilence, war, <laughs> famine, and the old woman dies. And this is a samosa reflecting um, after her funeral. It's about three minutes. <clears throat> Directions. Samosa is in the kitchen of her home, very earthy, knotty pine, this black cauldron, her hair is tied up and she's wearing a red apron while she cooks at the cauldron. Samosa. Such a stew the world is in, left redder by the blood that is used to heat, the tensions that confuse what should be together apart, 
And I stand apart, knowing the lies we must learn to refuse the simple suggestion of battle, as if that could lead to victory over ourselves, isolated, broken, needing mending, answered by war. Such insanity looming from the part that forgets the heart. There are no solutions in mind. Man, you have thought too much. You reason not to truth or knowledge or home, but to further apart from the wholeness you so desperately seek. And the reasons are plain. Spread before what you see, your eyes have created such a maddening vision where your domain rests on the broken souls crushed underfoot as you strive to get ahead. And now you're on the verge of losing the one you had, not mounted on the shoulders of the world, but rather the one you've lost, trying to conquer the one you seek. There's a knock on the door, large wooden metal cross ties. Always a knock, trying to uncover what secrets that the passage of years hides so close to the ground as if the very earth revolved about the lies we speak. And it's taken as gospel by masses forced to their knees by the need of reason to control their scattered lives and give direction to what broken belief that too many have died for. Always a desperate push to shove the dirt away from our eyes to see clearly just once what we hope for. And now to be elected to a position of answering the doors that appear shut and deaf to the pounding between the years, ringing the passage of time, cursing through such narrow corridors that so many try and are squeezed out by their own belief turning to doubt and left embracing any convenient illusion, springing to fill the spaces that we've created between what we seek to hold together and what we are, alone, apart. Second knock. Always a knock, trying to unravel what riddles that the mind pulls closer apart, so shoutingly quiet, as if out of range of the years, revolving about the deafness we profess. And that becomes the canon of the masses aimed at the hearts, left bleeding in their need to realize what seems as possibility and give wings to hope that so often lies only in grace. Always that deep burning need to find the half that hides, to hold dearly just once what we love for. A third knock. Always the pounding, to design what shapes we live in, to give so much to what becomes another's cause, to fight or not to fight the need to be held, close to what pulls this strained longing to return to dreams, completely free of any desire to know what was left in pools from which we spring into light and last our hours caressing memories as candles to illumine the blackness we've become. Thank you.